Hello, and in this Chapman Game Dev how-to video, I'm going to be showing you how to set the user's camera to a camera you place in the scene, either temporarily for like a cinematic sequence or permanently in the case of ending the game, switching to uh, a menu of some kind or any other event you could possibly think of. We're going to be doing this via a camera actor, um, something for the camera actor to look at, and triggering it using a trigger volume. So imagine if I'm the player, and let me give this a start. I'm the player, I just defeated the main boss, and look, there's the end goal. Let me wander over to it. I have saved the princess, and when I walk into it, the camera changes, it looks back at some kind of generic object, and it's over. Once the little sequence is done, it gives me back control so I can wander around, do a new level, or it'll trigger... Uh, the end of the game, so we'll close out, play some credits, go back to the main menu, anything you want. So, quickly, uh, this is done using one of these camera actors, and if we open up Kismet, a very simple sequence of when the trigger is touched, launch this matinee sequence. So, let's set up a scenario that we can then record as our, or display as our end game. So, let's go set up our little end game sequence over here on the far corner of our map. So first, let's place something that we want to look at as part of our end game. Let's call it Stairway to Heaven, and let's put a cool little stairway object. Perfect. Yes, and then like an arrow, because you never know when you're going to need an arrow pointing at a ladder that you want the player to look at. There we go. So there's our game, Stairway to Heaven. Okay, so with that in place, let's now place our camera actor, or first, actually, let's place our trigger node for how to trigger our event. So right click on the world, add actor, add trigger, place this trigger where we want it for when our uh, video occurs. So let's do it right when we're like rounding the corner very far away from our spawn point. It's like, huh, I just entered this level. What do I need to do? So you wander over to this object and it points at where you're supposed to go. So let's turn this off hidden so we can tell where it is really quickly. So with that trigger node selected, let's go into our Kismet. Actually, I keep forgetting a section. Let's go back over here. And now let's add our camera object. So in our content browser, let's go to actor classes and type in and search camera. There's our camera ag actor. Click, drag that into your level. Sorry, click that, drag it into your level. And now we have our little camera actor. Let's give it a rough position uh, and point it roughly at what we want to look at. So currently it's on the ground a little bit, so it's a little low. Let's point it up, kind of just lightly moving it. Nothing, nothing spectacular. There we go. We'll move it in more detail in a second. So our camera, now we go with our camera selected. Let's go into Kismet. And in our little blank Kismet area, let's right click, new matinee. And with our camera selected, remember, double click on matinee. So with our new matinee sequence, let's right click. Now first, we need to add a camera group. So not empty, not anything else. Camera group, because we have our camera selected. Let's call it uh, goal cam. Something descriptive of what it's looking at. There's our goal cam. Now, right click in blank space again, and let's add a new director group. This is how we're actually going to change what uh, our player is currently looking at. So new director group. So at time equals zero, so make sure this little scroll bar is at zero, it should be there by default. Select the director row, right click, or sorry, director role, and click add keyframe. You notice Unlike movement, there is no default keyframe here. So selecting that row, click Add Keyframe. So what do we want? We either do the director group, which is our player's default camera, or goal cam. We want to start looking through goal cam. So select that, click OK, and you'll notice that goal cam is now greenly set. It kind of starts to look like an editing program. So let's move this little dry slider bar. Ah, we can now see what it looks like through our camera's eyes. And currently, it's a little off from what we want to look at. Now here's a fun trick. 
Let's move our keyframe out here from here a little bit. Select our little keyframe. Once we click, left click on that keyframe, you'll notice it says adjust key movement zero down here. So if we were to right click and use WASD like we normally use to move around, we can now move the camera's actual location. So let's move it to exactly where we want it to be. So we want it to look like really awesome camera angle. There we go. Perfect. Um, so that's its new position. Um, let's also set the duration of this while we're here. Five seconds is a little long. Like three seconds sounds pretty good. There we go. After three seconds, if you don't get the idea of jump on the ladder, it should uh, you should have more problems than making a game or playing a game. So this is the entirety of our matinee sequence. Let's close it. And you notice the black bars away, everything goes away. Now, one last thing, because we moved our camera in the, re in the sequence, we now need to change the matinee slightly. Um, if we, oh, sorry, in matinee, select the movement because we moved our matinee, right click on this movement and instead of relative instead of uh world frame or instead of relative to initial we want to change it to world frame that means wherever we place this object that's where it will be if we didn't do that the camera would stay at its original position so fun thing right click on movement change it to world frame um and now it will move exactly where we want it to now all we need to do is hook it up to our trigger event. So selecting our trigger, new event using trigger 11, touch, touched, play. That's it. So let's start our game. So, oh, look, something's over there. I'm going to wander over to it. Oh. And then once it's done, it finishes. Oh. You notice, you may have noticed that it didn't give the exact same viewpoint as it should have. That's probably because I set this before I changed it to world frame. So let's move this back, uh, arrange it again to where we want it to be. Perfect. And now that it's set to world frame. There we go. Let's close this. Play it again. Wander back over. There we go. Now it's perfect. So there's a little problem, creative problem solving that you are most likely going to have to walk into. Um, also notice that if I try and trigger it again, it won't, which is awesome for a cinematic, not awesome for other things. Like if you're using this to open a door and you want them to see it each time you open the door. Um, and remember, select the trigger, go down to max trigger count. It's set to one right now, so only trigger once. Zero should trigger an infinite amount of times. So now trigger, wait two seconds, and then trigger. Oh, it's at the end. So let's do rewind on play. There we go. Trigger, and then when it's over, trigger, and then when it's over. Awesome. Hope you learned a lot. Keep stay tuned for more.